Welcome to the Necklace Workshop. I'm Paul. In today's video we're going to start to disassemble the Unimat SL lathe. Hi everyone, so uh, as I said earlier we're going to uh, start to disassemble the uh, Unimat lathe here. Um, I must admit I've tried to make this video once before and uh, got myself in a bit of a pickle uh, trying to work out how to actually take it apart but I mean that's exactly the reason um, I'm making the videos because um, there doesn't appear to be too much information on the web on how to do it so hopefully this will uh, be of help for someone else. So um because I've already done it once there will it's pretty easy to undo a lot of the bolts and uh, but anyway I'll talk you through it okay so what we're going to do first of all is take off the um, the power feed so there are just four Allen, Allen screws and I think I showed most of these I showed how we did it when we, we looked at the power feed so um, so we've got uh, let's have a look, one, one allen bolt there, there's one in each corner, I've purposely left these, these a bit loose so uh, we don't spend too much time, as I say I did it uh, once before. Ok so just four, four uh, allen bolts and then we can uh, lift, lift the lathe off, so I'll just lift that off there lift that off the power switch so here we have the power feed oh, I dropped a bolt let me just get that okay, okay. all right so I think what we do is we just today we just start to remove sort of big components and then we start stripping them down uh, this into their component parts as um, in the subsequent videos so I'll just uh, pop the bolts back in here just so I don't lose them. So I think you can see here one of the uh, when I talked did the video on the power feed, um, I I expressed some sort of um, thoughts about not actually fitting it after the restoration, and the, and the reason for that is if you look at this is the the bed of the lathe here, and it screws down via two or well, four four bolts each side, but the whole bed rests on on the surface that um, it's bolted to. However when you put this onto this what you effectively do is you leave a space underneath so what I was concerned about is an element of flex. Now um, having just taken this apart earlier in my experimenting um, it's quite a chunk and, and, and I think I I was probably for or wrong in the assumption that there may be some sort of flex on that so um, so I think it's highly likely I will be putting this back okay so I just put this out of the way for a second so what I think or what I've learned really is um, one of the things you should before you start to uh, the disassembly process it, I think it really makes sense to if your if your lathe's covered in uh, sort of grease or whatever, um, as this one was, it's worth giving it a bit of a clean down and just trying to um, uh, make yeah just try and get all the junk off the ways and everything, so it does make the uh, disassembly a lot easier. Um, and I would put the uh, the cross slide. In the in the middle of the lathe, and likewise the um, uh, the 
Yeah, yeah. So the, the actual adjustment of the tool post in the middle of the in the middle position because that'll probably help us a bit a bit later. So just to suddenly make the thing a bit easier, um, if we if we remove the electric motor, so we've got one um, one nut there which we you know obviously is loose. Um, if I would also suggest you remove the chuck before you start the main disassemb disassembling, if that's the word. And as you can see, there's a there's a hole here. So if you need to put a bar through to be able to undo the nut at this end, that works quite well. So we've just got one nut here. If we take that off, and then we can pull the pulley. Now this is has not there's no key key on this uh, this pulley. So um, yeah comes off okay well again as I say I'm repeating myself but I've done it already once so then we've got one uh, allen bolt there so we can loosen that off and then we can pull off pull off the electric motor so we just put that to one side and then we look at that so now we've got the um, so let me just show you so undo those. So this is the lever we use to advance the spindle. So this is when um, the, it's used as a uh, milling machine, and and this is ver vertical. So um, so that just pulls out. It's just a spline. It's very easy. So that's that one done. So now if we take the headstock off. So we've got a, um, a small pin here, which well, again, when I did the taper turning, I I showed you guys that one. And then there's a bolt at the back here. So we undo that. And if you remember, that was how we did the taper turn. You know, we set it up to cut tapers. So we can take that right out actually. So quite a hefty bolt, but again still with the five mil Allen key, and there's the tapered pin. So now our headstock can just lift off. Now this is the this is quite interesting. You can see this part here. Now this weighs a fair fair amount. So this is what they suggest. Um, if you looked in the uh, all about the uh, Unimat SL um, video, um, as you as you know, the the electric motor bolts onto this, and this is how they imagine you use this as a hand drill. But it's a fair weight anyway, and when you you've got the electric motor on, goodness knows how they imagine you're going to do it. But I will have a go. When we, but I think it's a. Uh, it, yeah, I think it's a bit of a non-starter really. Okay, so we've now got uh, we got that off the headstock. So let's move up. So let's take the um, tail stock off. So one bolt. I think we've seen this in a, when we I did the video on the tail stock. So it's just one again, a good old five mil Allen bolt or five mil Allen key to to loosen it. Let's take that off and we just pop the back together. I'm quite good at losing things so uh, better not do it to start with. Okay. Should put that over there. So next thing we've got the um, tool post or tool holder and again I think we did this in another video so that's just uh, there's a T-slot there and it just slides in so it's coming up coming to part apart quite easily so 
Now this is where I made a major uh, hiccup earlier on. What I did was I tried to remove the uh, the ways and the, the bolts uh, you go in through the bottom of the casting. So that's definitely not what you want to do. So you need to make sure they're, they're running, uh, it runs back and forward easily. So um, obviously it's a bit of a challenge if you've got one in a terrible state, but uh, hopefully, um, hopefully none of you are in that situation. So what I found the best way to do is you, if you remove this, um, uh, so we, we've got uh, the bolt there to remove move the hand wheel, and if you just hold the hold the um, lead screw, this this you can unwind the hand wheel. So this is just a normal right hand thread. But the lead screw is actually a um, it's a left hand thread because obviously that's what makes it when you turn it in a right in a in, in a normal direction makes it disappear. So um, so what we do now is we now remove the loosen the ways. So we just turn turn it over, and we've just got our. Four Allen bolts again, using our same five mil span, uh, Allen key. So one, let's get that in there. Number two. visible for you. One to go. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Let's lift it back up there. So now we can we can push push it in this direction and you'll see the we've lifted it out there. So we've got the lead screw still still in there. Well we can we can pull the ways out. Now you before you do that you need to ensure the these uh, this one's loose because that's the clamp for the uh, the cross slide so just loosen that a bit and so one two and obviously as the the these are the bearing surfaces for the ways to, to uh, go up and down on you really want to make sure they're clean before you start pulling it out pulling it out because you don't want you don't want to score them, and also there's not much you can do do with them. It's not like they're they're bearing surfaces in there, and as you can see, there's so much uh, or so little space. It, it's pretty impossible to affect a repair there. So let's take the lead screw out. So as I said earlier, it's a uh, left hand thread, so you need to. Um, Remember that. So yeah, I, I, I managed to take it apart. Well, no, I never got it apart. I got it into a, a bit of a state, really. It's obviously a fine thread, so it um, takes a little bit. 
you could have the uh, the cross slide a bit further along. So there we got the lead screw, and then we've got the uh, compound slide. Now, uh, so we'll pop that there. Okay. So I was my original thought was I would try and make these about 15 minutes long, but um, I think um, I, I yeah. I think that's a maybe a slightly flawed plan. So what I'm going to do is we 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 stop there, and when we um, on the next video, then I'll start to disassemble some of the other parts. So we've got the, uh, uh, the compound slide, the headstock, uh, the tail stock, and assuming we've got time, we we look at the um, auto feed. And then we need to be able to take the uh, the brackets and the pulleys off the electric motor. So there's quite a few bits. So we we may end up doing um, sort of three or three or four. And then I think what I'm going to do is then we go through once out all the component parts are disassembled, then sort of cleaning them. I'm not going to um, put you through watching me clean them, but so I'll, I'll just do that. Um, uh, on my own and then I will but we will walk through inspecting the um, the parts and then uh, seeing what, whatever we need to do to try and repair them before we uh, reassemble okay well thanks very much for watching I hope you found it useful and uh, as always um, stay happy strong and healthy cheerio